Sports. Welcome back to Where's My Sports At. On today's podcast, we are joined by The Holic, and we're going to be talking about what grinds my gears, NRL. So I'm going to start off by throwing it over to Jimmy. Jimmy, tell me what's grinding your gears in the NRL right now. Mate, do you know what really grinds my gears? There's a couple of interpretations of the rules that's been absolutely frustrating me to know in this year. The first one there is tackling the tackling the attacker in the ear when they're going to score the try. Like every other sport has, if you touch a person in the ear, it's automatic send off or it's a penalty try, right? And we've seen it a couple of times this year where they've gone, they've wrapped around the legs, and then when they've gone in the motion to score the try, they said, ah, they're not going to score anyway, and they dropped the ball. Well, if the person wasn't in the ear touching them in the first place, they probably would have scored, right? And that's happened, I think, now about five times this season. I think the NRL maybe needs to change that rule. Rugby's got it right. You don't touch the guy in the ear. Um, what do you guys think on that one? That's been grinding my gears for a while. Mr. Hollick? Sitting there as you're talking, I'm nodding my head, thinking of Dallin Watanezelizniak Watani Watani being taken out in the ear, um, which is kind of an interesting one for me um, because there's been this big focus on the disruptor. Um, rule at the same time where if you're an attacking player or you know, attacking player and you miscontest for the ball, you get penalised. Um, what is it? Chanel Harris DeVita, one of the early rounds there. Um, he was literally, his legs were taken out from under him when he was contesting for the ball as the attacker and he got penalised for disrupting. And then you get the opposite side, which is Dallin got clearly tackled in the air. And in that situation, what pissed me off is that I didn't believe it should be a penalty try. But in a um, try scoring situation, if it's foul play, you get two choices 10 in the bin or penalty try. It wasn't in a penalty try and it wasn't 10 in the bin. So, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty annoying one for me, that one. It's it's interesting yeah. as to when the NRL applies the the sin bin rule, but I'll get to that one. So you're talking about two situations here. You're talking about Chanel. Funny funny enough that we only seem to be talking about warrior situations, but hey, look at all the gear we're wearing. We're going to be slightly biased, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, one eye though. Yeah. So with the Chanel one, was he the person receiving the ball or was he challenging yeah. for the ball? He was challenging for the ball. Oh. And he yep. basically, he was about to take it and the um, defender took his legs out from underneath him. Mm. And he landed flat on his back. I'm pretty sure it was Chanel. I'm trying to pick, remember yep. the game. It's probably about round two, I think. Uh, it was a night game. Might have been against the Storms, actually. I can't remember. But um, yeah, landed flat on his back and got penalised as a disruptor. <laughs> And have you actually, you, you mentioned it's a disruptor rule. Have you actually read up on the rule to see what the technicalities of it are? It's an interpretation that they, you know, they often change the interpretation rather than changing the rule. I haven't read it myself, yep. but basically it means that you get these guys who come flying through, jump up and never actually intend to take the ball, but they just pretend to take the ball so they can disrupt the guy from catching it cleanly. Yes. Um, so there's a lot of conjecture about why Rocco doesn't contest the ball a lot of times and just lets the guy hit the ground and nails him. I believe there's a significant part of that is like we don't want to risk getting penalised and giving them a piggyback out. Whereas if we tackle the guy fairly, put him on his butt, they've got to work their way off the line, which fatigues them. Um, but when you can see we're in a genuine position where Rocco can get up and contest, um, he does get up there and do it. I think it was the Titans who did that and scored a try. So um, it's, a, it's a pretty murky rule. Pretty murky rule. Interpretation. Yeah, like I, I've, I've always seen it as if they're going for the ball, um, so like if they're going as the disruptor, their eyes should be on the ball. So when they're, go when they're going to catch it, but yeah, when their eyes are on the player that's going for the ball, then they've got no intent of, of going for the ball, right? And that's where they should make it quite clear in the rule that you've actually got to have clear intent of going for the ball in the air and contesting right? <laughs> I was going to say the same thing. Because there's another example. As well, that an, another example of a guy oh, clearly had his eyes on the ball and that's all he was doing, but he jumped, got his timing wrong and jumped too soon. And he was actually on the down slide when he shouldered into the player and he was called a disruptor, even though he wasn't trying to disrupt, he was genuinely trying to get the ball, but he just messed up the timing. So, yeah. Interesting. That sounds like around a, a player safety sort of a call. Um, but interesting, you mentioned how rugby do it, Jimmy. So rugby's pretty much come that stage that uh, Mr. Hollick was talking about with uh, Rocco not, not jumping the air because basically – yeah, pretty much unless it's 
you're clearly going to be there. Rugby players let the opposition catch the ball now, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, or um, sometimes with, with rugby now, they try to do the Aussie rule thing where they stick the leg out and kick the opposition player. I've seen old um, Geordie mm. Barrett get sent off. Mm. That, that was kind of funny, though. Um, that's Maybe that's where they've got to get to is just, just run up and just kick them. Hiya, catch it, carry on. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Are we going to be doing a lot of comparisons <laughs> between rugby rules and league rules today? I feel we might be. That's for me nah, to comment, mate. Nah, seen league's it. not... Seen the game <laughs> league's not... Yeah, league's not rugby, mate. <laughs> well, you used a comparison. <laughs> used a comparison earlier, so I think there are probably a few of them pop up. Just with the ball in the air. Just with oh, the but ball I know. I tell you what. I mean, in saying that, I do watch the All Blacks, and I will. You know, a couple of things that grow my gears. I would compare them um, to rugby. Um, one of them being, I get really annoyed with the NRL with players attacking the face and choking the guy with the ball. So oh, yeah. you know, you've got enough to to deal with when you've got three guys on you trying to hold the ball when you've got a 115 kilo prop literally you're having you in a full chokehold i can't understand how they they're on about player welfare and they let that go whereas or you know just pushing in the face and so forth or you know a, a slapping the guy across the head with a forearm as he's trying to score a try play on every time in rugby league but in rugby any of that you'd be red carded so there's a big discrepancy there um, and not so much from a, you know, it's not going to kill anyone, I don't think, but it's just filth. You know, I don't, I don't think it's any, yeah. and that's why I like the women's game, like, they don't do it. One thing, you know, that I don't understand with, with Lee is you get Reese Walsh, fractured cheekbone. You know, the guy who did it, you know, it's accidental, you know, couldn't have been helped, you know, no, nothing happens. And then you've got the situation like with SJ against Manly. He does the kick. The guy, you know, goes for the legs a little bit. There was no no injury at all to SJ. The guy goes off for a few weeks. You know, it's um, it seems to be that when you look at rugby, if it's accidental, it's a head clash or anything like that, it's you're done. You know, you're, you're off. Um, whereas league, it sort of looks at intent. Rugby looks at outcome. Like I looked at the laws. And rugby's law, it's basically, even if you didn't intend it, you hit him high, you're done. The league is, well, if you sit and you weren't going for his head, but you accidentally did, well, that's fine. You know, well, I, I saw I, in, the in the game, I prefer that, to be honest. But, you know, the last Super yeah. Rugby game I watched was a semi final, I think it was about two years ago, three years ago. And I think it was the Brumbies against the Blues or something. This ball pops up in the air, two guys are going for it. One guy happens to catch it. It's literally a split of the second thing, and they run face to face into each other. And the defender gets red carded. <laughs> but like, Reese yeah. Walsh's one was a bit different. Way the guy was a tackler. Reese clearly yeah, had I mean, the ball. Still, the I, I believe that's an accident. It's like I don't, you know, there's guys like Dale Finucane who will run yeah. in head first intentionally, but mm -hmm. that, that was Reese Walsh changing direction at the last minute, and the guy just misjudged and he ran into his head. That the defend attacker when they contribute to it in that way. I think I'm I'm not giving a red card, but if the guy comes in with intent, the, the attacker doesn't move or drop or something like that, yeah, then that's... What about body position? Yeah. You know, you, you can call it accidental, but everything in life that's an accident can be avoided some way or other. You know, there's usually okay. some that's some like factor to it. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Um, I, 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 you can I, I agree with you there. But... Lower your body position. Yeah. You can lower, you know, the league does a lot of high wrapping tackles because that's when we want to shut the ball down but that is part of the outcome potential outcome of that you know so if they're yeah, talking you're, it's going on yeah, about band tackling yeah. above the waist yeah. or something you know um, yeah. yeah i'm just saying and, if you think about I, I agree with, i agree with the holic, i agree with the holic here craig um this is one of my big bug bears is that if someone is dropping an attack you know like and this does happen a lot like um tedesco for example He's, he's similar to Reese Walsh. When he goes into the tackle, he drops down. And a lot of the times there where the player was actually going to hit was yeah. actually about up near the chest. Tedesco does and drop. Where they, yeah, and where they do end up hitting is the head. Mm. And so I think that's what they need to look at is where would have they been if they didn't drop, which is hard to do when it's on the fly, but maybe that's but something that they, they need slip, to address. When the attacker slips. Yeah. Um, well, I think and, this stuff know, is all taken into it, account in the yeah. mitigation. Yeah, I mean, that's what the, the, yeah. the I guess the outcome is it's something that will always be ambiguous and then open mm. to interpretation. Yeah. Um, but I think rugby's put me off 
I can't watch a game yeah. when I see a guy yeah. being sent off for that. It's just, and then they send them off and it ruins the game. Um, yeah, I'm not interested in watching 12 on 15 or something in rugby because of things like that. I think it, if you had you know, 10 minutes in the bin, that guy stays off and you have to replace him with someone. Yeah, I'm okay with that. But a red card, I haven't mm. watched rugby, a super rugby yeah. game since. Yes, yeah. It's, like the World Cup like, final. Yeah, it is, you know, and, and that, that's one thing where rugby looks at it from an outcome, league looks at it from an intent, and I think yeah, it's always hard because you're going to, there's going to be examples on both sides that you're going to disagree with. Yeah, I mean, but it's, it's reaction as well, right? If, with, yeah. Yeah. If Lusick doesn't and it's the snap, application if, with the NRL. Yeah, if Lusick doesn't snap um, Elias's leg in half the week before, <laughs> SJ doesn't get that penalty, right? So, mm. <laughs> And that, to me, I think that was a pure wow. accident. That was it was a just a oh charge. yeah that was it was a charge down attempt. That's all it was. It was just yes. the next. Yeah. And he was he was in the air. Yeah, he was in the air as as he kicked it out. Yeah, and he just like he yeah, he was yeah. in the air trying to charge down. The other guy kicked his shin, not the other way around. So shit happens. But yeah, <laughs> that's it. And it, things don't seem to be applied um, the same from game to game. The same rule, you know, yeah. is, is, that's a bit. You know, you see something happen one week, and then next week it's like, well, last week. And I think that sort of gets you going as well, too, doesn't it? Well, did you see the woman's, you um, know, uh, woman's state of origin? I posted that um, clip of the Queensland girl. <laughs> Literally, the girl died, the New South Wales girl dived at her legs and took her out in the action of kicking. She wasn't even penalised. You know, it's the most blatant one we've seen, the most dangerous one we've seen all season, but they didn't penalise it. Um, and, and that kind of gets to my second big bugbear is like when the TMOs or the bunker, get involved and when they don't really mm. annoys the shit out of me. I, I don't yeah. think the bunker should be able to get involved in anything other than, you know, a sin binnable foul play incident or yeah. when the referee asks them. And I, I don't believe they, yeah. they should just be able to pop it, in and say, oh, right. that was a forward pass or that ball went dead. If the ref misses yeah. it real time and it's not a captain's challenge, play on. And the other thing is with the the – try reviews i think they should get three looks no slower than 50 percent of real speed and if they can't make a decision then it goes with whatever the ref said on on the field and i don't well i should maybe they just give it to the ref to make a call because i don't like that they go with ref's call either just put it up there if the bunker can make yeah. a clear decision mm. make it if you can't then it goes back to the ref and they make a call yeah, and, and on that um, point as well, I've noticed in some games where they've they've the refs like gone not asked is it a try or isn't it a try, and then what they've done is they've gone oh hold on there's a knock on four plays back, and I don't know if you guys remember like there was Wade Egan's um, trying to like yep. it, again it's going back to is this rugby are we going back to like the halfway when he like pushed the guy over the whole advantage it's almost rule, feeling right? like that. Yeah. If it's getting towards you know, the end of like, a game, you what, play advantage until like the next day until they score, basically. <laughs> that one, that, yeah. that will say that one for what grinds my gears, rugby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we're getting there. Um, <laughs> like that, that, that's another, um, there's another thing there as well on the tackle. Um, because last year they went hard on the hip drop, but have you noticed there that they've been doing a knee drop this year and they actually haven't been calling it? So a lot of the players have been going up, getting around the legs, and then dropping down on the knee. So I've seen that happen a few times now, and it hasn't been called, and we've had some guys that have had some gnarly injuries from it, um, and they're dropping onto the leg as they're going down as well. Um, and it's not a hip drop because it's not using the hip. So they've found another way around the rules to get people down. Well, they're clever, these guys. I mean, I, I, there's one solution to it, but they probably won't do it, is you've just got to call held. Simple as that. As soon as yeah. momentum stopped, held. And if you don't let go immediately, then give them, you know, ten meters or whatever. But from the time the the guy is contacted, and his momentum stopped, it will often be two or three seconds before they call hold. But then they'll still drag them onto the ground, and then it's three point three yeah. to three point seven seconds before the ball actually gets in the um the half uh, the dummy half's hands. Just call held. So you don't get That's three guys in the tackle. You just get two of them. And as soon as the momentum stop, I'll drop it. I mean, it would speed up the game, mm. but it would probably cause more injuries from, you know, fatigue and so forth. Yeah. But who knows? 
Well, let us increase the interchange bench. <laughs> back, back to the good old days, eh? Yes. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, that's something you mentioned. That's something, you know, I think league has changed because of the amount of interchange they have now. You know, you think back to the old days, you had little guys found so many more gaps through because the big guys got tired because you didn't have these interchange benches all the time. Now you can have guys that don't have to play a whole match. You're only on for parts of the game. And so they're always almost fresh, you know, so it sort of makes the defense structures better, but it sort of has shifted the style of game that we played over the years, isn't it? I'll tell you this much. If we, had, if you're only allowed four interchanges and that was it. And once you're off, you couldn't get, come back on the Warriors win the comp this year. Hands down. Mm. Because there's no one else other than maybe Brisbane who has props who can play 80 minutes. And both our yep. props and Toll who can yeah. play 80 minutes. Bo both of their edge back guys can play 80 minutes. Wade Egan can play 80 minutes. Very few other teams have that fitness. Mm. Because you look yep. at the Panthers, yeah, their props only play 20 minutes, 20 minutes. That's where we're going to see a big difference next year. James Fisher Harris only plays about 50 minutes and he only runs about 110 metres max. He doesn't run 200 metres like AFB who's playing 75 minutes. So, um, you know, it has impacted the game a lot. Interesting. Yeah, it has. I'd like to see And hopefully we see – yeah, yeah, hopefully we see the other boys pick up, like seeing um, Bunty Afoa and Tom Ale last week and just what they were doing on the field. I was like, where have these boys been? You know, that, but they've. I know they've probably been playing a different role, but Bunty looked like he was running at the line again. Yep. <laughs> you know? Good to see. Good to see. <laughs> now, are we shifting out of what grinds my gears until we're talking about the Warriors? It's a natural no, no, we'll, we'll keep with what grinds my gears. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right, Jimmy, you got anything else that's grinding your gears right now? Oh, one's just the injury count eh, across the NRL. Um, I, I think at the moment, like, it, it, and that comes back to the point with the interchange bench, is it maybe time to to relook at that interchange bench? Because we're seeing a lot this year, and it's not just um, you know like one or two part time players; it's big time players. You know, we, we've lost Tom Travoyevich, we've lost Sean Johnson, we've lost Tohu for a time. RTS lost RTS, yeah, and then in, you know other, other teams. Old um, how many halfbacks? First string halfbacks are out at the moment. Most well, yeah. The blue, the blues, New South Wales Blues can barely field a, um, a halfback, and they've got one that's playing on one leg by the sounds of it with old Nico Hines. So, I mean, I don't know if that's a, yeah. um, I don't know, it's luck, I guess. You know, the Warriors, the amount of injuries we've had this year that they've finally started to notice. Um, at one stage, I think it was, was it 16 of our top 30 we had out. Um, mm. it's, yeah. But it's the one that surprises me is an amount of broken hands and broken fingers. Um, this year, there's a lot. Um, Warriors have had a few yeah. of those. Rocco Berry's got a broken hand. Toe's got a broken hand. Um, and there's a lot of guys breaking bones, which we don't normally see. And I feel like there are um, more hammies and calves, but I put that a lot of that down to the um, conditions because Sydney's yes. seen way more rain yeah. than we used to, and they're still trying to play that fast game. And you know, particularly the older legs, um, mm. you're going to you're going to mm. get that. And I was talking to one guy. Um, Joel Kane, who's an ex-NRL player, he's on SEN in Australia on the radio. And he reckons a lot of it comes from training and hammies are actually the cause of them happens days before that you don't notice it, but yeah. the, the muscles under a certain type of fatigue. And then when you go out and you run explosively, that's when guys are starting to get it. You see Kafusi, when he got that runaway, you know, pulled his hammy, then gave it to Hammer for the Dolphins about a month ago. So it's older legs and rain i think is one of my theories behind it and the grounds i'm saying they look a lot worse this year like if you guys remember weed killer round which was at newcastle yep um where they had half the field was looked like it had been just doused in weed killer and it was falling apart you know and um, when they played magic round after uh, following weed killer round that ground was falling apart as well but i think that's always been sun corp eh? yeah like it's always yeah. got clumps coming out of it but Maybe that's something as well to look at. It just looks like a lot of the grounds aren't as good as what they've been. It's, it, well, it's smart, because smart, a lot of it's to do with um, the because of the rain and the moisture, the, the natural grass that they normally put on the fields in Australia. I heard one of the greenkeepers talk about on the radio there is they they change the grass at a certain time, but because of the weather, it hasn't taken hold. 
as much as it does. I mean, you look at New Zealand grounds, they don't break up. Look at the, the Cape Town. We get as much rain as anyone, but that after an all-black test with you know two scrums pushing each other, it doesn't fall apart. But in Aussie, it's just the type of grass and the depth of the roots and so forth and the sand base that just comes out. Interesting. Yeah, thus causing more injuries. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> weed, kill, weed kill around it, it was, was just the worst. Uh, and when I saw that in that Newcastle ground, I was like, what are they doing here? It just looked atrocious. <laughs> Now, I've got one more, and I'm probably going to get jumped on for this one. But, um, and it's back to the Warriors. Have we got no one else to play dummy half while we're putting Lusick in there? I feel that his his pass, he picks the ball up, he goes backwards, then he passes it. That the TMM was actually stopping his momentum forward through the slow delivery. But also, I think he ran the ball once from dummy half. What's going on with that? Why uh, Is he being told not to run the ball or what? I mean, you know, this is a – it's always a tough one. Like, I would have been one of those fans, you know, running the fucking ball and getting, you know, all frustrated and wound up. Mm. But we all can accept that Webby is a pretty smart guy. Mm. And he extended Lusick on. He chooses Lusick. So something that he's doing similar with Bunty and his lack of running metres – Similar to Rocco Berry, his lack of, you know, contesting for the ball. People assume it's just these guys making poor decisions or they're not. You know, why are they doing that? There, there has to be mm. some reason um, he's still being picked, despite the fact that I do agree his his pass is lethargic. And one part of it is defense. But if you yes. go back, mm. you know, five years, or probably only five years, maybe three years, Everyone's going. Oh, we're going to need a. We need a hooker. Wade Egan's complete mud. He's useless. We're never going to win a comp with Wade Egan. So it's one of those positions that you're either a day one gun or it takes time to build that. But my bugbear is things like fundamental skills of a position, like a, a half not being able to kick, or any rugby league back not being able to kick a ball. I can't comprehend it because all you, you have one job, right? <laughs> and a hooker not being able yeah. to pass. Um, so we saw that from Paul Roach, who's an ex-Union halfback, straight off the ground. So I think, to answer your question, oh. um, Paul Roach doesn't do his ankle. Freddie Lusk yes. doesn't get on the field very much the other day, yes. and I think yes. he may struggle to in the future. And um, the majority, I think, of the hookers in the Warriors comp now are ex-Union halfbacks. So you've got Etuate Fukofuka who's sort of fringe between – He's in the, I think he's a development contract. He's between the um, Jersey flag and the NRL uh, – sorry, in the cup. Yep. His pass is absolutely money. Um, you know, it's, it's, yeah. And is he a hooker or a halfback? He's a, he's a hooker. Hooker slash wow. 13. He played against the Tigers yep. in the trial game. He was a little – he's quite a short guy. He reminds me of David Havili. Very stocky, mm-hmm. but he was just oh. chopping guys with those leg stackers like um, – Rocco Berry. So I, I, I feel like, um, and there's a, an, another young fella, um, Alo, who's come up from the SG ball, who's playing in cup. Great hooker. But his past, he's yeah. obviously not a, a rugby halfback. So it's mm. something I agree you've got to work on mm. getting that timing right. Yeah. And I think that was one of the things that impacted us across the field during that um, rough period is the timing of the micro schools and the passes, passing at guys' shoulders rather than in front of them, getting the timing right. And Long, long the dance if Freddie just hasn't got it right. So I feel like it's something he's got to work on or Paul Roach is going to take his spot. We know Nationale's mm. back as well. He'll get that bench spot unless they have a serious concern yeah. about Egan that they think he might need to play big minutes. Yes. Yeah, Lusick almost reminds me of Justin Marshall's pass. If you remember that, he'd pick it up, he'd stutter, and then he'd give the ball. And then you're like, what's going on? But I think with Lusick, I think he, I think he's in there because he's got a big engine. He's like um, Jackson Ford. He's the fittest guy in the club. Just his cardio. Yeah, just goes and goes and goes, eh? And gets gets better with with the longer the game goes on too. Mm. Yeah. 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 What about um, something that I was sort of wondering is, you know, it's been quite good. Not that people are injured, but these other guys getting some game time. And I always wonder if we need to um, do more sort of rotation, you know, because even your top guys don't play great every week because, you know, we've got guys who, like SJ, you said he's been lateral. You know, he has, there's a few weeks where he hasn't been great. There's other people who have, have good weeks, but then they go flat. You know, it's almost, you know, do we need to be giving other guys 
game time when they're when they're on the ball and taking off your your big names maybe when they're they're not on the ball like we've got some guys that we're playing all the time that are still maybe in their second full year of um nrl you know it still takes a while before you can perform every week at that level so i quite like the idea and i think this has been a good chance to actually do a bit of rotation freshen some guys up like the ones we've had on there who've been playing well i wouldn't be having them there every week because they're maybe not at that level where they could perform every week Jimmy looks like he's going to jump and in. I'll let you go first, bro. <laughs> you, you, used, you used that word rotation, didn't you? <laughs> hey? He didn't. He um, didn't put rest. In, <laughs> didn't put rest in front of it. Oh, he did it. He did it. He went there. Um, no, I, I I agree with that, Craig. I think um, one of the things is though is that with rotating these one-off guys in, the other teams not having enough time to study them, and I think it's that surprise factor, mm. and that's where. Um, like was it? I can't remember his yeah, last name. Goes like George, George Mawala, uh, Mawala Graham Telfer, Mawala Graham Telfer. That's the one. Um, he he was awesome, but you definitely could see there that there was some defensive weaknesses. And if a team picked up that over yes. a whole um, couple of games, they'll start finding holes. Yes, that's um, what I'm saying. Bring them in for the one -off. one offs now and then. Give other guys a rest to yeah. to refresh, and then they come back on firing the next week. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it's about I, I think it's balance, I guess. And I think tr trust now that you've seen these guys step step up and prove they can handle it, that means that, you know, what coach in his right mind is going to want to drop SJ if he can avoid it. But now all of a sudden, when you've got a guy who's probably played as good as any other halfback in the comp over the past couple of weeks, you don't have to rush SJ back in if his leg isn't completely right. Um, mm. I think one of the biggest challenges for us was when we had our best starting 13, but we had like 25 games of experience on the bench. That was really challenging. Um, whereas in, recently it's guys we've fitted in in starting positions surrounded by experience, but also having the experienced forwards to come on off the bench, which sort of I, th I think works better than just having a bench full of them. But... It's this is the the next balance is right. You've got Demetric Sifakula who came back last week, who is an absolute monster man. I don't know if you're caught in his game in, in cup, mate. He is. He, maybe he's carrying a little bit too much weight, but if he can carry, get game fitness at that weight, he'll be one of the biggest middle forwards in the comp. You know, he's a meter ninety now. Um, Leka Halasima, you've got Jacob Laban, you've got Zion Mau. You guys seen that um, reel I put up of Toby Crosby? Oh my no, I haven't, no, I haven't seen that one yet. Forget anyone else you've seen that you're excited about for the Warriors. Do yourself a favor and have a look on my yep. Instagram or my YouTube for the highlights of a kid called Toby Crosby who we managed to poach off the Hurricanes. Started out when he was 14 cool. as a 60 kg absolute beanpole center. Left high school mm -hmm. at 108 kgs, but is probably as quick is any of our outside backs except Dallin. And wow. He, he's, his power is just crazy, mate. You see these tries that he scored in um, Jersey Flag, where he's literally run through 10 guys. 10 forwards. Really? To, oh, mate. Explosive Sweet. power. Um, I, I mean, Adi Savir would be the only guy who would come close to, I think, having his speed his power and his ball skills. There's um, a, a lot of the highlights I put in there from playing rugby, like man's rugby when he's about 18. And he's making these breaks from halfway as a number eight, burning their backs and passing from the centre of the field to hitting a winger on the fly on the right-hand wing. So we're passing left to right as a prop <laughs> or lock wow. now in league. Um, so you've got a long winner nuts, but yeah, he's, a, he's the guy I'm most excited about. Um, but you've got all of these guys here now, so how do you keep them engaged and keep them in the system? Um, because it's probably a couple of years before they, they really come to fruition. As you've got to give them the odd game time, you've got to give them the debut mm -hmm. like we did for Zion to, to show that he's definitely part of it. But he doesn't have the motor that people keep saying, why isn't he playing? Well, Mitch Barnett and AFB break their leg in the first 10 minutes. He's not playing seven minutes of, of NRL. He just physically couldn't. Well, you no. know Tom Ali at a stretch probably could. Jazz definitely can. Bunty would struggle, but 
You know, that's where mm. Zion's going to build that that man's body, build that, you know, robust fitness. So easing him in and out, as you said, is a good way to do it. And I think it's, you know, a couple of guys on the bench here and there and the odd injury gives you the chance to do it. But we've proven we've got a big squad. And um, I'm actually doing a roster review this afternoon for my own channel. We've used 55 players across the NRL and um, Cup this year and 29 in the NRL. Shit. Shit. Because I saw a stat the other day where we've had 73 total missed games um, with all our injuries compared to the, the next one down is like 62 or something. It's a crazy amount to think about. But um, one, one thing I wanted to like mention to you both, how good's Barney been? Oh, How good has Barney been? My player of the season. Oh, I love that down, guy. Hands down player of the season. So <laughs> he's <far>. awesome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. And he's such a good dude. Like a gr- and he's been a great leader, a reluctant leader, from what I've heard too. Oh, I don't buy into that, mate. Because watching them live, he's the guy who took, yeah. does all the talking. You know, when we really? went down, we got on the back yeah. back foot against Cronulla. Everyone's standing around looking at the sky. He's the one drags him, and he's the one landed landed on the line. Um, so I think he's naturally meant to be a captain, but he doesn't really like the media Man. side of it. Hmm. And and this is good. I think, you know, um, like I was saying before, when you have people who, like, you know, SJs or even Tohus, who people will defer to because these are their roles. Now, SJ's job is to run the attack that you sometimes will hold back because you're waiting for them to do it. And that's why it's, you know, it's good when they're not there because the other people can step forward and you might get something that you didn't expect that you have or that person who steps into it gets growth that they wouldn't have got when that person was there. And exactly what you were saying, you know, have a couple of these talented people on the bench. And as James said, the, op- the opposition doesn't know them, so they do something unexpected. It energizes everyone, and I think it's a way to incorporate all these people we've got going through, but keeping it, you know, keeping competition within the roster as well. You get someone come in, Tom Ali, you know, wasn't he amazing, you know? And, um, like, you can't be there the whole time because you've got to build up that that match in our fitness, but I think it just keeps everyone else motivated and on edge for their positions when you see other people coming in. And I think, yeah. you know, we can't just settle on a 13 and that becomes our 13 because you, you want to be loyal. You want to build, um, you want to build, um, what's the word, um, relationships between the players. So they're used to playing together. But, you know, you also don't want to be playing someone who isn't at 100%, you know, because players no. can have a bad. I mean, no, yeah, yeah, most of them will be you know, carrying something, whatever, but it's just having that the mm-hmm. balls to do it. Hey, I'll, I want to add one more crypt. What is it, axe to grind? Um, before we. Yeah finish up that we're on the Warriors is selling out every game so far. Outstanding. But nothing the only me club. More than, Yeah, but look at all the blue seats empty in the East Stand when the members who buy tickets don't go. That pisses me off so much that there should be a way for them to kind of make them available for genuine fans who want to be there. But, you know, because I've tried, I'm not a ticketed member because I can't get to enough games. You try and get a seat in the East Stand and 80% of it is booked out by sponsors and by members, yet every week it's probably 10% empty, um, which is quite frustrating. Um, The tickets are gone, but the people aren't in the seat. So I don't know how you'd do it, because if you allowed a ticketed member to resell their tickets every week, then, you know, they're, they're making probably more money than they're paying for the seat, so then you'll get, like, scalpers buying them. But maybe they can just yes. release them, just release it and say, hey, I'm not going this week and allow the club to resell them and get another 10 bucks for it to get the club some money. Um, I think that would be a, an interesting way to, to go. Because if you've only got 20, yeah. was it 20, 23,000 or something seats, you know, you could have 3,000 people missing and it makes a big difference. 